done by degree. This is going to be on polypo uh, polypoid. Can't spit it out today. Upper right hand corner, we have not Yunko going up against Crane. That is the same BSL Crane, which is part of the reason I'm doing this replay, because it is the BSL player highlight from, I think Crane has re-entered BSL. We'll see his group as we come around to it. This is from Rogue Gallery Turf Wars. And if you guys are not familiar with Rogue's Gallery, I'm just going to say it. I think they're the best North American content producers as far as just a general league right now. Period. Out there. So North America, I guess a little bit of, I think South America is kind of the Americas. Rogue's Gallery has kind of highlighted North American players at large. So you'll see a lot of Hasu League, Chobo League, BSL in general crossover. Jayun plays there and they just produce amazing stuff. So check them out, and I think they have fun commentary. Their commentary is usually done by high-level North American players or Canadians. That's right, Canada isn't in North America. I don't know why I had to. It's the American bias sort of thing, the mental whatever. Anyway, they have a lot of fun stuff they're doing, and usually they keep it a little bit more off the cuff. They allow the trash talk to kind of flow, and I think that keeps it fun. Keeps it a lot of fun. Um... But in particular, yeah, I've been enjoying this last season. I haven't been able to catch as much of it as I've wanted to, but what I have caught has been absolutely a blast. That is the Rogues Gallery stuff. I'm rooting for Team Fancy Scarves myself. So check that out. I believe they stream, I know at least every Sunday, but check their schedule on Team Liquid. Usually I just subscribe to them really on Twitch is the best way to do it. And then keep an eye uh, when they're streaming. It's usually been extremely helpful for me because it's usually around dinner time. But anyway, enough of that. This is from Turf Wars. This is going to be uh, Crane. Going with a gateway uh, assimilator, upper right-hand corner, we have the barracks rather than a front door blockade. Opposite corner, and we are not seeing an assimilator being grabbed, so it is possible we're going to see a barracks into command center, potentially. Yeah, going to be a very late factory. Bottom right-hand corner, SCV is going to scout there. This is cross positions, so it might end up paying off. And sometimes you can sneak this. This is kind of an interesting play. A pylon. And the, I wonder what the... Logic is behind that for, for Crane. He's going to sneak a pylon. Maybe this is... I actually like this play. Because I believe the purpose of this against not Yunko is to kind of hide that additional pylon. Because as this SCV comes in, we're going to go ahead and get rid of Vision. That pylon is going to be invisible. I believe. At which point that SCV is going to... Basically what that indicates is, hey, there's a pylon missing somewhere in the base. Which oftentimes, will suggest, as you can see, that pylon is not scouted. That is such a clever move. And so now wanders in the base and sees just the single pylon, which usually is indicative of some sort of cheese. That probe scout just doing its regular thing, we do see a command center first. So now Unko has to be like, oh man, I'm seeing cheese somewhere on the map. I really need to worry about this. Plus there's a Dragoon. So the Dragoon coming out is flat indicative that there's another pylon someplace. We see Cybernetics Core spinning up. So Unko's got to be a little bit concerned in the dark bunker going up. Is that the probe? Nice reaction time on Crane. Trying to get that probe in for a scout. Sees that there's a command center there, I believe, but at the very least knows that there's defensive posture. There's an additional pylon warping in. But now Unko's going to play this, assuming something like Proxy Reaver, Proxy VT, sending out another SCV scout, and is just going to start hunting everywhere. Might even overextend with some... Yeah, so sending out two SCVs. Because of that hidden pylon. That's a brilliant play. More players should do that, honestly. Because now you have two SCVs that are wandering around looking for proxy tech. Looking for some sort of cheese out there. And they're not going to find it. And that's also going to cause an adjustment in the build order overall from Unko. And rather than playing a little bit more aggressively, economically, or going for something in between. He's going to be sitting back waiting for an inevitable attack that just isn't coming. Instead, Crane is going to go ahead and plop down a Nexus. Very clever play, and probably going to play a little bit more economically aggressive. Might even go for, I don't know, we'll see if he adapts to this and goes for a third Nexus. Overall, SCV Scout wandering and otherwise still sees only a single Dragoon. So has to believe at this stage, and the Dragoon looks like cleaned up that SCV to the south. So has to believe there's something out there, right? Ooh, Dragoon taking a little bit of damage, needs to wander off. And you can see Unko feeling very uncomfortable, wanting to press forward and do something, but is just expecting something, something out there and doesn't know what it is. SCV continuing to hunt down to the bottom corners. Dragoon range has finished, so it's going to start wailing on those barracks, on that barracks, while those Marines are in the background. This is forcing a much earlier engineering bay, which again, this is like resources that Unko doesn't want to spend in that direction. This is great play from Crane overall. Great play. N another probe, yeah, going to wander out and just take a quick third. So basically, 
all information from Unko's perspective is this is some sort of cheese. I should expect a reaver drop any second. I should expect DTs any second. Is building everything to try to cope with this. We'll see if there's also additional turrets that are placed down. There's an initial turret at the natural expansion for any sort of DT. And instead, 9 o'clock location, you see that nexus being plopped down. And the SCV's in the base, still only seeing two pylons, now seeing a robotics facility and an observatory when it wanders up, and that's got to be extremely confusing for Unko. It's like, what am I going up against? Love this play. It just shows you some of the creativity out of Crane. Engineering Bay floating to the north, again, still concerned about something. Armory being plopped down. And this is going to cause a lot of delay. This is shortened, so Siege Tank just going to come out uh, with something else. But this is allowing Crane to go ahead and get that 9 o'clock base up. And really do it on a single gateway as Unko and he basically was like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to presume that you're going to be in a much more defensive situation, that you're going to be plopping down turrets rather than building tanks or building down, uh, building additional factories, things along those lines. And you didn't even need them at this stage. So, ha ha ha, mission accomplished and good play. Academy still going down. So this is Crane, like, I still don't know what, or sorry, this is Unko going, I still don't know what's going on, getting a second factory. And still very concerned. Does have that engineering bay to the north. Still waiting for a drop that's not there. And still just seeing four Dragoons on the front door. Siege tank is going to cause Crane to go ahead and back up. But that's... Th so he's now got three Nexus at the 6 minute 30 second mark. Which is going to give him a fantastic economy. Going into the mid game. Has his first observer route. He's going to... I'm wondering if he's just going to wait for his observer before he does any sort of additional tech decisions from there. Second factory here. And I almost wonder if Unko is going to follow this up with kind of a... Maybe a level 1 weapons... Uh, Rush, he is getting mines. He wants to go ahead and plop some vultures out there in the field. Maybe get some eyes. Maybe try to figure out what's going out there. Maybe do some economic damage. This might pay off for him. The question is, is does Crane pylon wall this or get enough Dragoons to kind of defend these uh, locations? You can see he's already staging up uh, for that sort of defensive effort. Just now getting his second assimilator up. So been very mineral heavy up to this stage. Citadel of Dune does get comms added at this stage. So he knows, okay, it's going to be a little bit later. And he's pushing Starport. So this might actually be... So basically, I feel like it's up to Unko to do something interesting. I guess not Unko. To do something interesting to follow this up. And I'm wondering if we're going to see a Vulture Drop. I uh, My problem with Vulture Drops is oftentimes it's such a big investment. Also getting Command Center. Interesting. Command Center with... The, so never mind. This is just to get level 2 weapons up. And a little bit maybe early in this build order overall. We'll have to keep an eye on that starport. Um, it could be he's just a little bit off build. No, he's going to do it to get a science, a science facility a little bit earlier. Because he's a little bit concerned... Again, well, no, okay, so yeah, to move to, ignore me, to go to level 2 weapons, level 1 armor, he's just going to try to settle back into the level 2, level 1 uh, timing push, and he's just going to slow move these vultures, drop a little bit of mines, get some map control, It'd probably send out some vultures to do some scouting um, otherwise, but trying to get his third base up, plenty of dragoons down, so how, what, what are we looking at as far as gateway count, we got six gateways, forge down, and we already see a Templar Archives and a Stargate. Honestly, I feel like at this stage, if he wanted to, Crane could even roll into Carriers, potentially. Which might not be bad. I think Unko, perhaps sensing that potential, has dropped a handful of Goliaths before anything else. That's keeping the Siege Tank count really low, though. So three Siege Tanks, and this is only a single machine shop uh, producing Siege Tanks at this stage. So he's definitely going to have to play it a little bit more slow roll. Which is, again, I think why he wanted that Vulture Speed. Um, to go ahead and apply some pressure while he's going to go ahead and try to take his third. But Crane already moving up to a fourth. And the upper left-hand corner has two Dragoons stationed there. It's going to be somewhat difficult to defend. Some nice mine coverage overall. And Unko going ahead and taking his mineral only. Crane in a defensive slot around his mineral only. I think he's trying to do another kind of ha-ha-ha, maybe I'm here, maybe I'm not. With the Vultures moving in there as far as taking additional base. Getting scouted. Doesn't have an Observer there, so he's going to have to back off a little bit from that mine. But there should be, yeah, there's already a can warping in. So I feel like Crane's still in a fantastic position. He's sitting at 67 probes already, which is a great position. He's ahead in supply, which you always want to be as a Protoss player. We'll see if that count continues to climb. Does have level 1 weapons moving alongside. And I'm waiting to see, yeah, there's the Arbiter Tribunal. Should be in a good position with that Arbiter Tribunal and have plenty of Arbiters out for that level 2 weapons, level 1, ar uh, level one armor timing. But here's the thing. Those vultures making their way down there, being pushed back by uh, several dragoons. Here's the thing, though. This is coming out significantly later because of all of those early game shenanigans. So I think Crane should be okay. It looks like he's setting up to maybe even plop down another Nexus in this upper left-hand base. So he's setting up for a potential kind of guerrilla refugee toss uh, style against that level 2 weapons. 
Level one. Ooh, some probes getting caught in transition. Dragoon's gonna go ahead and clean that up. I am gonna comment in chat, which I know is bad form, but this is actually a show match between, this is from, uh, this isn't BSL 12, this is a BSL highlight match. I should change the title. Actually, if I have a mod, if you can go ahead and change the title really quick for people in chat to know that I'm gonna do this match. Um, I'm going to do a follow-up match with uh, Mars and then I'll continue with BSL 12. Apologies to, because this is the thing, being a streamer, sometimes you hop in there and I'm like, I'm gonna do this. And then I realize, actually, no, I'm not gonna do this. I wanna get the BSL highlight stuff out before I post a lot of the videos for BSL 12, which is why I'm doing this. And now I feel like, yeah, it's interrupted the flow of the commentary. I'll dive back into it. Special shout out to uh, Jesse and Nooks out there, BSL contenders. Appreciate you guys. And I'm actually looking forward to casting your guys' games in particular. That and 80s mullet. I'm like I'm excited to see 80s mullet. I think he's going to be in Chobo League this season. I'm hoping he'll be like a round of uh, final round contender. Anyway, getting back to the commentary. <laughs> uh, Vultures sneaking into that upper left hand base. Looks like Unko actually opting to... Yeah, still very light on siege tanks. Only five siege tanks to speak of. Does have all sorts of factories down for Vultures. Is plopping down some additional units. And I'm almost wondering if he's just going to skip. Because this is not the the sheer amount of siege tanks you want. He's actually playing it really light on defense, to be honest. A sizable enough attack force from Crane would be able to roll over this. Crane actually has a 40 supply lead currently and is a nice position. It looks like Unko is going to go ahead and take that 3 o'clock location and try to establish that. He's basically hoping that just doesn't get scouted as far as the defense force and just relying on mines being out in the field and being able to perhaps engage it in that direction. Zealots still not speed upgraded. Will be momentarily. Recalls being upgraded. Uh, we do have EMP also, uh, but here's the thing. With those Arbiters being out as early as those Arbiters are going to be out, I'm actually kind of curious where the Arbiter, because that Arbiter should have been finished a while ago uh, for Crane. It's, yeah, important to get those Science Vessels to have plenty of EMP to deal with potential recalls. Siege Tanks moving up. Actually, is that the entire Siege Tank force running up to defend that? So, okay, so there's still three Siege Tanks here at the main, but again, you can see if Crane just had a little bit more map coverage. Okay, I think he does see this. Okay, there's the additional Arbiter. Has more attack forces moving across the field. I don't think Unko has enough. He's really playing this light. He's trying to defend everywhere simultaneously and just relying on Crane not being able to capitalize on the unit position. It looks like some Siege Tanks are getting caught, and keep in mind, I still feel like that Siege Tank count was lower than it could have been. Up on the high ground, that's enough of a piecemeal grouping that he can't really... Uh, charge in on that. This is very Dragoon heavy. I don't see any High Templar in the mix. This Arbiter does have enough for it looks like a Stasis. So honestly, a Stasis right here, and this base is certainly going to get eliminated. But huge EMP! Wow! Big EMP on that Arbiter. Now the rest of the attack force is moving in. It looks like that Arbiter very nearly taken out, but the Zealots right on top of those Siege Tanks. Easily able to wipe them up. Three Siege Tanks in the background trying to reestablish uh, the grounding there, but that command center is in a lot of trouble. This is plenty of Dragoons. Maybe... Oh, Arbiter gets taken out, though, overhead, and just through some nice macro and some reinforcements and some mines! Beautiful mines! It looks like Crane is going to get pushed back at the 12 o'clock location. Still has a s huge supply lead, but unfortunately, a lot of that is, in fact, in probes. So it's a little bit... a little bit deceptive. More Zealots wandering in, realizing that he can't defend absolutely everywhere at once. I like this counter unit positioning. He's actually going to move into this 3 o'clock location. And here's the problem for, for Unko. Yes, he defends the mineral only, but he just doesn't have enough to defend absolutely anywhere. SCV's in flight from the 3 o'clock. Looks like some Vultures re-establishing position. They might wander in, moving in some reinforcements. And I just feel like Unko's just spread very, very thin. And while all this is happening, Crane is just establishing bases absolutely everywhere. Hasn't grabbed the 6 o'clock because it looks like a mine is in the way right there. Those zealots finally cleaned up. But I feel like a Crane should hit 200-200. Actually, will hopefully, he'll have a lot of those tech units out there. I almost feel like another Stargate might be valuable right here. Level 1 weapons coming online. His main is still functioning. Okay, he does have another Stargate. He's sitting at 7, 8, 9, 10. So 4, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 gateways. 12, 13 technically in the upper left-hand corner just in case he needs to reestablish a base somewhere else. But critically, weapons upgrades still favor Unko. And I feel like because of, again, just so many probes and a lack of units underneath, Unko might be able to, is kind of sneaking back into this match. It's becoming a, a, a real match. And he is sitting, his main still mining a little bit, level two weapons, or sorry, level three weapons, level two armor on the way. 
Natural expansion still mining has decent saturation across all of these bases. 62 SCVs, which is about where he wants to be. Looks like that pylon being attacked in the upper left corner if you're wondering what that noise was. My brain was like, where is that happening? I'm going to go ahead and open up that front. So Unko might be in a situation where all he has to do is build a lot of siege tanks, sit back, sit on his four bases, and just get favorable trades. And might be able to push back in this match. It comes down to, I feel like those spellcasting units on the opposite side. Big engagement with no arbiters overhead, but the siege tanks are not sieged as well. Zealots are on top of the siege tanks this time. Science vessel overhead, the dragoons coming in. All the wow, now all of the zealots are gone, but there's still plenty of siege tanks flooding in. So the dragoons getting absolutely wiped out from that back corner. And keep that's the thing is, yeah, okay, Crane has an economic lead, but Unko has a lot of upgrades, a close reinforcement point. Just a huge amount of units to work with. An Arbiter now wandering up. There's still Goliath to pound away against it. Is he going to be... And it might get EMP'd as well. And actually losing that Arbiter, I think, just on a miss rally, perhaps. Maybe it targeted up to join that fight. And it just ended up coming a little bit later. And that's a huge loss. Really, what Crane, I think, has to hope for at this stage is getting, I don't know, some Psy Storm out here. Some more Arbiters up here. He is producing off those two Stargates. But this upper left-hand base at threat, it looks like Unko going to play this kind of the end around. Like, I'm going to work on your most recently established base, pick away at that, and then make my way across. But this does make him a little bit vulnerable to recalls. It looks like some Zealots swinging their way across. The thing is, does he have Arbiters to do the recalls? Some probes sneaking through in that transfer point. Okay, now an Arbiter rejoining. It does have full energy. Is it going to get EMP'd? Looks like the Science Vessel doesn't have quite enough energy to pull off an EMP. It is detecting all those Zealots underneath, and the Zealots able to get underneath those Siege Tanks as a lot of those units thinned out otherwise. This is still a close reinforcement point. Just a stream of units moving to the upper left. More Science Vessels in place. Good stasis on a handful of the rest. So nice defense here from Crane in the upper left hand corner. More Zealots flooding their way across it. I am assuming this is going to be just Zealots to try to reinforce and defend the rest of this because they are the fast-moving unit that can get here and provide that point in defense. However, I think he's done it. I think he's held. Somehow Dragoon manages to sneak across the line. This is a lot more siege tanks. So, so Unko losing a lot of his army. It's still sitting on, at additional bait. And usually you don't want your army crushed in this situation. You want to have that standing army that's pounding away and able to get additional uh, damage done. A Nexus actually in place, not mining yet. So Crane basically taking position all over the map. Unko trying to grab another expansion bottom right, realizing this is probably going to turn into a long-term starvation, just macro-oriented uh, map. Observer making that way. It's, a, again, a naked expansion, so could easily be taken out just by a zealot or two. But in the meantime, Crane has bigger problems. This upper left-hand corner is continuing to be pressed. He still wants to defend and hold this, and needs to get a large enough attack force to do so. Three Arbiters out. This is actually a better count to sort of deal with this. We do have one Stasis catching, in fact, the Science Vessels. Cannons down in the front. Dragoons engaging from underneath. Zealots Ooh, the Zealots dragging some of those mines back. So Crane not quite able to get the engagement he's looking for. Being very patient with this. The Zealot kind of wandering out. Out that direction. So gathering his, his troops. He is near 200 supply. Sitting at 185. Both players being very, very patient with this engagement. Unfortunately, with that stasis landing and no engagement happening for Crane, it's a bit of wasted energy as a result. Arbiter moving its way. It looks like it wants to try to stasis. Yeah, those backseas tanks only catches two. And then re-engage with the rest of those troops. I, there is an observer to help clear those mines, or at least use allow those zelts to mine drag into those siege tanks. Some, some vultures now scooting their way in. Good EMP across all of those dragoons and that Arbiter. And I don't think this is a large enough attack force to scoop this out. For Crane, so I believe this attack army is going to stand, and that was some nice EMPs overhead. Still, there's a decent stasis, and I take it back. Second round of reinforcements, plus the high ground working against Crane, and the Zealots able to continue to stay on top of the siege tanks and wipe things out. And critically, I want to point out that the Arbiters remain alive. Might want to spread out the Zealots and get some more to the right. Okay, yeah, to, to clean those up. And so now Crane, again, able to hold this base and get some, honestly, some decent trades overall. That was a smaller attack force. I didn't think he was going to be able to do it. This is costly battles. SCV's transferring to this 12 o'clock base way too early, honestly. Command center's not there. The main is mined out. Reinforcements trying to push in. He really wants to try to slow Crane's economy down in some way, shape, or form. While all that was happening, it looks like that bottom right-hand base was, in fact, interrupted and taken out. But now, yeah, a skeleton defense force for Crane still trying to hold this. Unko just continually trying to press into this. About 30 supply downs, but keep in mind a lot of that is still in probes. 
one Arbiter taken out, another Arbiter taken out. That hurts. Uh, and it looks like Zealots and Probe's just going to abandon the Mineral only and pull out. It looks like actually he's just going to abandon this upper left-hand base at large, period. And perhaps play Refugee Style, try to regroup. And that's a big win for Unko. He's starting, now he's finally, I think for the first point in this match, suddenly has a supply lead. Level 3 weapons is going to be online for him momentarily. So the Green's trying to provide some sort of disruption. And he's looks like, that's an interesting play from Crane. Sending out observers to try to see what he can see. He does this. Okay, the 9 o'clock, he's in a lot of trouble though. 9 o'clock is thin. Does have this mineral only up. Might be able, he, he's going to try to take the 6. That's been spotted though. And Unko is sitting, okay, he's got that 12 o'clock base mining. He's got that 3 o'clock base. He's basically 4 bases. I'm going to say 3.5 bases with that mineral only. So 3.5 bases versus, what is this? That's not saturated, which is going to be, I don't know, two three and a half base Protoss. So basically even. So which is the place Unko wants to be. And he is continuing to shred this upper left-hand base. Still losing some siege tanks. Crane is not making it easy for him. But I'm going to shift things back and say, okay, Unko now has the lead overall. He's in a great position now. He's got all sorts of bases established. He's got his upgrades. All he has to do is get a large enough army established. Continue to mine out the map. Keep a couple Goliaths to deal with those Arbiters. And then just make sure he doesn't get any... As long as a large recall does not land on his back factory line... While he's stranded, he'll be okay. He should end up winning this match overall. It is up to Crane to do something to sneak back and win this match. Crane building up, getting back up to 200 supply. Once the cannons warp in, they're going to see that that's spotted. Uh, be able to deal with that mine right there. Looks like some Arbiter uh, action moving out here. So this base slowly getting taken out. A lot of resources lost. All of the, I think all these probes are going to get wiped out unless there's a recall at some location. I'll try to keep an eye on that for you guys. But yeah, Crane just kind of re regrouping. Unko hitting 200 supply ahead of him, and it is a very strong army. Look at this. A lot of siege tanks, a lot of vultures underneath. That's plus the siege tank count we have in the upper left. So honestly, he can kind of do the, the leisurely let's walk around, particularly with that upper left-hand base being taken out. Crane going to try to establish that bottom right. I'm not sure there's enough just pure spellcasting units to try to even up the upgrade difference. Level 3 weapons coming online now. Arbiter is there, but honestly, science vessels have been part of pretty much every attack, and there's enough comsat to neutralize a lot of that. Some vultures engaging from the right. Siege tanks behind them. Crane actually in the red, losing a lot of that. Nice stasis! Actually, only catching the Goliath. I take it back. I was hoping some more siege tanks would be engaged, but engaging from the bottom left, some zealots up front that Arbiter getting pinned back, and it looks like Crane is going to have to back off. Might get sandwiched between that attack force coming from the north. I just looked at the raw chunk of it, but it's really only vultures and a single Goliath. So not exactly what you wanted to catch from that stasis. Crane once again having to lick his wounds and back off, trying to regather. He's in trouble. 3 o'clock base completely mined. 12 o'clock base completely mining. Unko re-establishing, well, taking upper left. A divided map is a Terran win if you just slice it across the middle. Granted, there were some resources that were snuck from the upper left. The Arbiter count, count is growing. Crane is at 200 supply. Actually, losing those probes in the upper left might have been a little bit of a sneaky godsend because now he has that supply freed up to build more of a raw army. Nice stasis catching the science vessels as well as a lot of siege tanks. Another stasis waiting to be cast. Another big stasis, catching a lot of that army. The Zealots able to get on a lot of that siege tank line, trying to re-engage across that left corner. One Arbiter getting taken out, but there's just not enough bulk of Protoss army to continue to engage this. Unko still sitting at 190 supply. Crane sitting at 150. Things are looking ugly for Crane now. And it looks like a Vulture was able to sneak in that bottom right-hand base, clear out four probes on the kill count. And he's actually, it looks like he stasis some of his own Zealots. So the Zealots going to come unstasist and probably get taken out pretty rapidly by everything that's just sitting there latently. One critical thing, I, I do want to point this out as a benefit for Crane, is he does have pretty decent vision across the middle of the map at the very least. He knows where his opponent's army is at the very least, and where it's going to be headed. So maybe, looks like a zealot somehow sneaking up here. Observer kind of refanning out. But here's the thing, yeah, if, if Crane keeps losing these bases, and isn't able to really reestablish bases in time and keep his supply up he's just going to end up getting rolled over and it looks like unko dividing his attack force he's going to dive into the six o'clock sorry five o'clock and six o'clock 
And honestly, I don't think there's just enough to hold this back. Unko has a huge bank. While that's all happening, it looks like Crane is going to re-engage. He's going to be able to take out a command center upper left. Might even be able to take the 12th clock. But even with that trade, because Unko's still sitting at 200 supply and still has 4,000 minerals in the bank, I think it's just trivial for him to go ahead and retake all of that upper left hand base. Basically, this is like this is all of Crane's mining expansions. Nine o'clock is almost out. Mineral only is it in threat as far as a follow up. Unko, yeah, he loses 12 o'clock. Actually, lifted it off. Like loses 12 o'clock, loses 11 o'clock. Actually backing up to go ahead and defend it. I'm not sure he even needed to do that, to be honest. But even doing that, he can go ahead and come back, clear that up, get back to 200, 200, and just get back to work, wiping out everything uh, out. Wow, this is crazy from Crane. This is ballsy. He's going to go ahead and try to take the mineral only in the upper left-hand corner, desperate for mine, from mining bases, and see if he can sneak back into this match this way. Okay, science vessels. One science vessel getting taken out, so that's at least something. But yeah, just Crane is too spread out. Unko's do doing a really good job of keeping his army cohesive. Another Arbiter is going to get taken out here. Good stasis before it lands, but there's no army to really capitalize on that stasis. It looks like another Arbiter is stranded with these Dragoons. So, not only so okay, yeah, he took up that took out that upper left-hand base. It wasn't able to take out 12 o'clock, though. Was able to disrupt a bit of mining, but he's down to 43 probes. This base is getting snuck. Crane can't defend it. And in the meantime, Unko is starting to regather this army that was to the south to go ahead and engage into that natural expansion and mineral only. Bunch of siege tanks not even bothering to siege to wipe this army out just because it's coming in such so piecemeal from Crane. Crane down to 73 supply. Honestly, I expect a GG here from Crane shortly. There it is. Nice play from Crane overall. But Unko, yeah. Whew. Well played from him overall and taking the match. And I'm hoping to see... I'm. Not sure if we saw Unko in any of these BSL matches, really up and down. Well played by Unko to get back into this, especially considering that rough opening. But look forward to Crane overall in BSL. Look forward to Unko. I hope to see him in BSL here and there. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.